Oh, I know you're here because you're done watching with Miss Tao and Mr. Rivera's video, right? So, let me introduce myself first. I am John Jersey Arsalas, the last presenter of the Filipino grievance against Governor Wood. Before we move forward to discussing the Executive Order Number 37 and the arbitrary acts of Governor Wood, let us discuss first the relationship of the U.S. and the Philippines. Mr. Calvin Coolidge, the 30th President of the United States of America, from 1923 to 1929, advised the Congress of the America to fulfill their promise since the goal has been reached and which is the loyalty from the Philippines. And what is the promise that America made and what made them do it to the Philippines? Well, they promised that our country would be conserved and developed for the benefit of the people. And the reason why is because Filipinos were patient and diligent to the task of meeting the conditions given to them because they trust in the Americans. And it's the time where he sent Major General Leonard Wood to the Philippines as a Governor General. Filipinas expected that this spirit of cooperation would be maintained. Political emancipation would be complete. But in reality, a train of usurpation and arbitrary acts resulting in curtail of our country's autonomy and destruction of the constitutional system, reversal America's Philippine policy. Now, let's move on to the Executive Order Number 37. Declaring that the laws creating and defining the powers of the Board of Control is the government in which private corporations are absolute, nullities or may be treated as if it never occurred. In this order, the Governor General also announced his purpose to exercise solely by himself the powers and duties developing upon the said board. This order is purported to be based on an opinion rendered by the Judge, Advocate General of the United States Army, and confirmatory opinion of the Acting Advocate General on November 7. Then, Wood withheld the publication of his order until November 10, a few hours after the legislature had adjourned, thus depriving the legislature of the opportunity to consider the matter. The laws creating and defining the powers of the board of control have been enforced and acted upon the present governor general and the other officers of the government for a number of years and they have neither been replaced by the legislature and annulled by the congress nor declared constitutionalized by the courts and because of what happened Filipinos officials were able to appeal to the judgment and conscience of the American people in order to safeguard the rights and liber liberties of the Filipino people through a protest. The protest was carried out through a petition letter, Filipino grievance against Governor Wood. And this is what it is written in the protest letter. Besides the executive number 37, following are the arbitrary acts done by the Governor General Wood. First one, he had refused to assent to laws which were the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. Second, he has set at not both the legal authority and responsibility for the Philippines' head of departments. Third, he has substituted his constitutional advisors for a group of military attachment without legal standing in the government and not responsible for the people. Fourth, he has reversed the policy of Filipinizing the service of the government by appointing Americans even when Filipinos of proven capacity were available. Fifth, he has obstructed the carrying of out of our national economic policies, duly adopted by the legislature, merely because they are in conflict with his personal views. Sixth, he rendered merely perfunctory the power of the legislature to pass the annual appropriation law by reviving items in the law of the preceding year, 
After vetoing the correspondent items of the current ap appropriation act in flagrant violation of the organic law. 7. He has made appointments to the position and authorized the payment of salaries. Therefore, after having vetoed the, the appropriation for such salaries. 8. He has used certain public funds to grant additional compensation to public officials in clear violation of the law. 9. He has abrogated upon himself the right of exercising the powers granted by the law to the emergency board after abolishing said board on the ground that its power involved an unlawful delegation of its legislative authority. 10. He has undoubtedly interfered in the administration of justice. 11. He has refused to obtain the advice of the Senate in making appointments where such advice is required by the Organic Act. 11. He has refused to submit the Senate appointment for vacancies occurring during the recess of the legislature in contravention of the Organic Act. 12. He has continued in office nominees whose appointment had been rejected by the Senate. 13. He has usurped legislative powers by imposing conditions on legislative measures approved by him. 14. He has, in the admission of affairs in Mindanao, brought about a condition which has given rise to discord and dissension between certain groups of Christian and Mohammedan peoples. 15. He has, by his policies, restrained relations between resident Americans and Filipinos. 16. He has endeavored on the pretext of getting the government out of business to dispose of the, all the companies capitalizing by the government, worth many millions of the people's money, to powerful American interests. 17. He has sanctioned the campaign of insidious propaganda in the United States against the Filipino people and their aspirations. 18. He has attempted to close the Philippine National Bank, so necessary to the economic development of the country. 19. He has adopted the practice of intervening and controlling directly to its minute detail the affairs of the Philippine government, both insular and local, in violation of self-government. And lastly, number 20. He has insistently sought the amendment of our land laws approved by the Congress of the United States, which amendment would open up the resource of the country to exploitation by predatory interests. So, that's the end of my presentation. I hope we were able to teach you about the things that we should know to the Filipino and grievance against Governor General Wood. Thanks for listening and being with us. God bless everyone.